part of the Press Play Podcast Network. Look up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's... This is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wade, writer of Superman Birdwine, and you're listening to The Krypton Report. Welcome to the Krypton Report special round, not really round robin, but just hang out in a room and talk. I am Tyler, your host, the Superman of Blue, and with me as always, that beard and wonder, James, the Superman of Red. Yeah, the, the one who's not in the room. Yeah, sadly, James is not in the room. <laughs> got some special guests, the Superman of Black, Mr. Solomon. What's up, Bubba? And then, and the Daxamite of the crew. Oh my God! If you're the Daxamite, I, I, my heart breaks for you. What's up, Brian the Bat? Oh, hey guys, how's it going? I was Happy to, to be here. I just want to say how cool Brian is. Like he comes over wearing like a solid black hoodie with the the, the yellow bat symbol. Then he takes the hoodie off and he just has a, a green shirt with the green lantern symbol on it. Like the man knows how to dress. Let's just everybody. Let's get up for Brian. Aww. Aww. <laughs> but the first, All right, stop it. That's my living ring. The first thing we need to do is I need to crack open a, a Zoa, because our podcast is unofficially sponsored by as much Zoa as we drink. Well, I thought it was sponsored by... I had a Zoa the other day. And the other day. Dude, I, I, I live on at least one a day. And, then, and, and this is also sponsored by Arizona Green Tea. <laughs> it's almost like Arizona Green Tea. I, I thought... I thought cocaine was our sponsor. <laughs> it's not an entity, Brian. Maybe if it was the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so as we get started, I'm going to ask you guys a deep question. Completely unrelated to anything. Which Fast and the Furious movie do you think really is the one that jumped the shark? Five. Nine. I, I'm like, I'm like... I, got, I, I I say seven for sure, but I feel like five had just enough of believability. But once, once you had the rock, I think I think I think maybe six when six Lenny sure. comes back from the dead. What? Okay, and okay. they and they six. like six 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 bars. Nine. I'm I'm going with nine because it's true. It's just him in space. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Six. Yeah, six is when. Six is when. Uh, I, I mean, five. The the safe is pretty inconceivable, but it's an awesome idea. It's just enough of that. Like, okay, I'll go with it. Like, it's it's like hyper, you know, reality. You're like, okay. That, that, and then six, yeah, it's when Letty comes back and the one where they try to do that sexy gal with the Godot scene in the bikini, where you just you feel more bad for her that she needs to probably eat a sandwich than anything else. <laughs> um, yeah, so, yeah. I, would, I would give Gal Godot a sandwich. I also I go so, number nine because they treat the people in space with a car. They're in a car. Yeah, but it's like, pain. But, but the, in, it's in, pain. in seven, Don Lily steps like slams his foot on the ground like I am the street and like stands his foot in the street. The street, like the gr- breaks, and the f- I'm like, <laughs> okay, I'm right, Vin Diesel. You're not. Gosh, Vin Diesel cracked me up. He, 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 he literally was quoted as, "I know why Tolkien stopped writing because continuing mythology is hard." I'm like, don't you dare compare yourself to Tolkien. <laughs> the only person who can compare themselves to Tolkien is C.S. Lewis. He's dead. If we're talking anyone modern, it would be uh, George R. R. Martin. Okay, those two could have a conversation in the same breath. Vin Diesel, you're just continuing something that should have died a long time ago, and you just keep retconning, retconning, and retconning. But speaking of retcons, let's talk about comics because that's all comics do. Yeah, yeah, let's talk about comics. This is sponsored by comics. I don't. This is sponsored by comics. DC Comics doesn't retcon. Oh my god, Brian. Okay. So, <laughs> if only we had a DC Ultra Infinite Ultra sponsorship. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we just get paid seven bucks a month. Sorry. Spend okay. more than that on comics a week. <laughs> All right. So, we don't really have any news. We'll have news after tomorrow. We don't have any news. We do want to drop that The Flash Season 9 has started. The final season. 
It's a, you know, it's it's pretty sad that it's ending. But what I realize more that's, that's sad about it is I don't care for any character other than Barry and Joe. I don't care for any of the side characters. What about Iris? I've never, like, dude, I've been Iris doing, is amazing. Dude, I've been done with Iris in season two. But dude, he chose Iris. He didn't chose, he didn't choose Pat. It, it makes me even a little more hesitant to watch it, seeing as I'm, you know, so far behind. But I want to watch the the final season and see where they go with it. But, you know, I mean, the only reason is probably going to be because more people will end up coming back for for something throughout the season. Yeah, one last sent off. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> but I'm just like, I don't really care about any of the side characters. And that, that bums me out because they take up so much time. So much time. But the one cool thing was, is in the season nine, episode one, we do get the name drops of Cat Grant at Catco and Kara. So, so they're just keeping her name alive. Well, because who's Kara? She's that girl who came out and put her on to Supergirl on national TV. Like what? That. Yeah. Well, I thought I gotta say something. What? what? This might break all of you guys' hearts. Oh, no. But some boy... I'll never break your heart. Is not in the league. Hey, we'll, we'll, we'll get there, Solomon. <laughs> okay, we'll there. okay. That's the more podcast. Okay. I said okay. you okay. my podcast. We'll know. get there. We'll get there. Oh, oh, okay, Sorry. okay. Okay, a few okay. more. A few more. A few more. Okay. <laughs> the next thing is the Harley and Ivy Valentine's Day special. Did drop. And all I'm going to say about that is James is Bane. <laughs> no one, you're not there. Oh man, that that freaking episode is a trip. It's like 44 minutes, and it is just nuts. Oh my god, James is bad, man. Eh? Yeah, when you watch it, you'll you'll understand. More. I I want to be Bane. Does he does he talk about his mind board? <laughs> That's putting it lightly. Oh quite god. yeah, quite a bit actually. So, the next thing is, I asked you guys the other day. I was born in women's legs. <laughs> I, mean, I think we all were. <laughs> it's not a... Born in my I was born. I was born. So. Oh, yeah, your son is here. I need to shut up. <laughs> I was Do you born. feel in charge? I, I was born. I'm born in Circleville. I pretty much pretty much think I told your son to, to tell people to suck it. Probably. Okay. <laughs> so the other day I told you guys to think of five things that you want from Superman Legacy. Yeah. And five things you don't. So we're gonna start. Do you have yours, James? Um, yeah. So we're going to start with Brian. We're going to start with what we want. Oh. oh. You're going to start with me. What's the first I didn't, thing? I didn't compose a particular list. Okay. Because uh, I suck. So let's... Okay. Things that things that I want. Number one. Number one, I want Brainiac. Okay. James. I think we all can agree. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's kind of... That was kind of my... Uh, want for for the vil you know for the villain because we we need somebody different somebody bigger um, okay my number one want is i want it to be like everything's established i want us to kind of come into it and really feel oh, like i was given no particular order the one i apologize i said write five things i have five things i'll give you five things so well, I don't have a particular. I mean, that's kind of my second one along one the line. That's kind of my second one along the lines is like everything established, like no origin. Like you right. come in, he's Superman. You know, it's a movie about Superman. He's Superman. Yep. That's it. That's all you. That's all you need to know. Follow the story as you jump in. So Brian, what okay, well that was on a list of what I didn't want. So what's your next thing? Of what I want. Mm-hmm. <sighs> You're gonna hate me for this. 
You're, you're going to hate it. So I, I want to see him in a traditional uniform. I want to see the red tights. I want to see the red cape with the yellow shield on the back. I want I want bright colors. I want That's I want to feel Superman. Now he doesn't necessarily have to have this the whole movie. You know, at the end he could have a new suit that's more like Rebirth. But honestly, I would like to see a tradition of suits. Um, that's kind of what I put in my mental list. I would like to see, you know, if it's supposed to be Superman Legacy and like a like a celebration of his career, I would like to see the the Flesher suit probably in the beginning. I would like to see a traditional Superman suit. Like I, I want this. Okay, I want this movie to feel like Superman. And for me, for me, being you know the old man, whatever, I, I want to see the trunks, man. I want to see, I want to see the, the bright colors. Like, I know you guys love Man of Steel very, very much, but I felt the colors were too dark. Right. My number two is bright colors. Oh, thank you! Look at you guys. I want to see bright colors. I want to. I want to feel hopeful. I like. I want this, and I'm going to move on to my number three because I'm an asshole. I don't care. Number three, I want to hear the John Williams Superman song. Okay, I, I want it. I want. I, I want. I want everybody to feel like I want it to be a bit of a Superman movie that hits everybody's beats. But that John Williams song just hits so hard, man. All right, James, go with your number two, and then Solomon goes. <laughs> well, I mean, I, that was kind of my number two already. I jumped in with that. Um, I mean, uh, number three, I guess. Um, would have to be like a a. Version a version of Metropolis that's the city of tomorrow. I agree. Yeah, they're good, good, good. I was trying. Good. I was trying to figure out how to really word that because, like, I don't want it to look like like the animated series or how it looks in the Tomorrowverse movies, which is very much animated series, like with like curved buildings and stuff. Um. I don't need it to look like science fiction. But see, like I'm, like I'm, like an alien world, but I I do think that like like the buildings, the the technology, doors, welcomes, like um interactive um you know, buildings and guidance, different things like that. I what what are what comic is it where like where Clark's walking through town? Maybe it is an up and up in a way, but Clark's walking through and he's like going through the geographic of Metropolis, like how there's this one street that divides the that divides the you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, that yeah. divides Metropolis and like this is where like the build all the buildings are for like technology yes. and like futuristic buildings. And then if you're on this other side, it's kind of like the older town. And you know what I'm talking about? Yes, I do. And like, I would like some of that. And and I'm with James on this. I want Metropolis to feel like the city of tomorrow. I want it to feel like the city of tomorrow. And that's on my list here. And I'm trying to find it. And God, what? you're looking for Dubai. There it was. Go back. That's not what was it. it. All right. So James, if you get a chance to look up aerial shots of the of the Arab nation city of Dubai. This is high picture Metropolis. Very like upscale, even futuristic, because the tower in the city looks like the kind of tower that Lex Luthor would build. Yeah. Now I'm gonna send you a picture, James. Uh, Solomon, go with yours real quick. All right. Well, I'm gonna see my three. Number one. Is I have to agree with you because I think the bad guy is Brainiac. Okay. You said Brainiac. Brainiac, heck yeah. Because I was looking at the poster and I was like, that looks like that Brainiac is there. 
Okay, so you want Brainiac for the new movie. But it should be Christopher Walken Brainiac. I'm still sticking by my Javier Bardenum Brainiac. Still sticking my by my number two. Superman, wow, in my spaceship. Number I'm sorry. Two. I'm too old for you. We should have a flashback. Okay. Of a flashback? Okay. Of Juro getting married to. Laura. Oh, so you want to see Laurel and like their and like how they got the child and like what happened? And all. So you don't want to see you don't want to see Kal El go off in the rocket. You want to see Jarrell meet Laura and their relationship. I I want to see that too. Like, I think that's what like, I think it could be cool. Like that. Also, hmm. um, your child very insightful. Yeah, he is. I, no, my number three, honestly, yeah. I think Supergirl's going to be in it. You know what? That's not a bad idea, dude. Supergirl. That would be, I mean, if it's Superman Legacy, you could probably get Supergirl in there some way to help into her movie. If her movie's going to be more in space. Okay, my next one. I want both Kents alive. Good deal. What do you think, James? I like that idea. I think, I think, I'm trying, okay. My biggest thing with this is there's so much that I like what they've done on Superman and Lois. But I'm thinking, what's been on the big screen? Because we're talking movie. We're talking, we know that some people will see the Superman movie, but they're not going to watch the sh- a show on TV. They're not that big of fans. So I'm trying to think what has been presented to them on screen. And it's always just been Ma Kent. So I want both Kents alive. I like it. No, I think that's really good. Because if they want to have a Superman who continues through multiple stuff, and if they want to really build it and continue it um, and create a legacy of characters, I think that having the grandparents around when John is born it makes a great, um, great addition to the story. All right, Brian, what's your next thing? Um, I, uh, well, hmm. I have, I have a lot that I don't want in the movie. Okay. We'll, <laughs> um, we'll, we'll swing back around. Okay. Uh, um, I, okay. I want, I'll say the, the next thing for my fifth one. Um, I want a real, Daily Planet team. Yep, that's that's I, I that would, is my number right here. It's my number five. <laughs> I want Lombard. Uh, I want Cat Grant flirting with Clark. Do we want that type of Cat Grant, or do we want the kind of power hungry? I want to build my own because I feel like no, dude, mixture of both. Because mm. okay, so one thing I really loved it. I, it wasn't. Uh, I think it was in the Last Sun. In the Last Sun. Cat comes back, and, uh, and Jeff Johns and Donner's last son story. Yes. Cat comes back, and she has plastic surgery, and she is right up in Clark's face, and like talking to him, and he doesn't even blink. Like he, like he, he, he is, he is totally devoted to Lois. Like nothing, like no flinching or anything like that. That's and, super. Neat. And I like, I like that aspect. But my thing is, is that the character that she's become now that they want to portray as a female character? Okay, whatever. I'm old school, whatever. Uh, but <laughs> where Brian's old school, he believes that husbands should beat their wives and they should wear pearls. Hey, 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 and Perry have that real relationship. I want a young Jimmy. I want him to be like, you know, like 19, maybe 18, 19. Young Jimmy. If Clark's going to be. I was young. Yeah. Make, make Clark like 25. I'm about to say, if they want to do a young Superman, I think they'd put him like 25, 27 type thing. So, you know, I think less than 10 years between Clark and Jimmy, because I want them to feel like friends and not like my little kid brother. Like uh-huh. kid brother, not like. 
like you and me, brothers. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Um, so, because I want that, like you said, I want that real relationship between all the Daily Planet staff. Okay, here's my next one. I want Lois to know. Lois to know? Yeah. I, I like the dynamic that we see on Superman and Lois, where she knows he's Superman. We don't have to go through that. Oh, so on my list, I'm, we'll just jump around with this. This will be new. On my list, I want to marry already. I'm okay I, with- I want that. We're already at that part of Superman where he's married to Lois. She knows. That it's year two of the marriage. <laughs> That's what we're jumping into. <laughs> oh, did James Gunn say it would already be year two Superman? He's that's it's kind of one of those things that we talk like just because he said it's going to be established and you know more and it's well but he was so vague. I, I want them married for my number five. All right, that's my fifth thing I want. Okay. So, James, what's your next one? And then we'll have Brian, and then we'll go on to don't want. Um. So if we're gonna have Brainiac, um, I want like the things that come with Brainiac. I want you know uh the skull ship and oh, yeah. I want oh, yeah. some kind of shrunken or maybe bottled city. Um okay. I would like to see Candor and perhaps him actually get in Ooh. you know, get in and out of Candor, but unable to I think I think still oh, being un, unable to shrink that is a good um, I did, learning yeah. thing for Superman, something he can't James likes Candor. Yeah. Uh-huh. James James is going Silver Age. He is pulling a Brian. I just thought of this. <laughs> I just thought of how you end the third act. If Brainiac's the villain, yeah. inspired by what Solomon said, Clark goes on the ship to fight Brainiac. Not only does he discover Candor, Brainiac has Kara's rocket. He well, found... wasn't that in the Superman and Brainiac story? They... See, that's what that's she what was, she was tied to like Brainiac, but he didn't have her rocket on board his ship. So this would be here. Her rocket is on his ship, okay. and that's how he frees Supergirl. So you end the movie okay. where he basically yeah. saves Supergirl, and then you could spin out her. Oh, so you movie. want to go? Wasn't it Injustice? That was an Injustice, wasn't it? Injustice had Brainiac invade Krypton, and Supergirl battles him on Krypton. And it's also in Superman Unbound that Brainiac is Brainiac's the reason Krypton was destroyed because it took when it removed Kandor. It unsettled the core of the of the planet. Yeah, I always liked Brainiac being responsible for Krypton. Either I it's, either, like it's either Brainiac or Krypton's own negligence of themselves. Nothing That's else, true. Bendis. Solomon, you go. <laughs> um. Well, let's see. Um, my number four. You can even throw in the five in there, buddy. Yeah, throw in your four and five. five. Give it to me. And then we're going to talk about what we don't want in the movie. Alright. Oh no, I have, I have a fifth one that I really want in the movie. Oh, okay. Um, in the story, I think they could... I'm not talking too far back, but I think they can make a sequel. Okay. And I think the sequel is going to be the bad guy is Doomsday. You want another Doomsday? There's something about me and Doomsday. I, I don't know. Say there's something about me and Doomsday? <laughs> I love this kid. <laughs> He's great. What, Just, what, where, where are oh, we? Hey, we could do that as our soup, as our costume for Halloween. What we'll do is we'll hook me up to like a cart, right? And you'll just dress as Doomsday, and you'll have like blood in your claws, and I'll wear like a tore up Superman suit, and you can just like wheel my body around, like you're like ah, dude, dude, <laughs> dude. If you go to Comic Cons or just even Halloween, and you dress up as Superman, but like you know, like die in Superman, and then like he's Doomsday, and he just walks around, and you just randomly like just fall in front of people, like dead Superman. Or what we should do is, and he's just like, Argh. what we should do is we'll dress you up as. A Green Lantern, and you'll kind of like be chasing Solomon. Kill walk. And, Can I do kill walk? And I'll walk around, and then we randomly just run into each other, and then just start fighting there, me and Solomon. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then you break us apart, and then we just walk back through the con and we're helping this meat fight fighting again. <laughs> and, 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 James, and James is dressed up as Batman and watching. <laughs> James just walked around. <laughs> okay. 
Maybe she just dress up as as Bane and just pick up random people dressed as Batman and just break them over his knee. Hey, what we'll do? What we'll do is we'll put Bane in a Batman costume, but we'll we'll rig it so like her legs are up high or something. And then we'll have a false bottom and James will pick her up and snap her in half snap her in half across his knee and she'll be like, ah! <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. All right. Like, in the, like in the the robot player. chicken in the robot chicken DC special where he just showed that out of nowhere. He's like, come on! <laughs> okay. All right. Anyway. Um, all right. Hold on. Brian's number five and then we're going to move on um, to Dolphins. All right. And I, I, I have something to say. Um... It would be so funny if, um, <laughs> literally, <laughs> um, Satan dressed up as Dark Side, and I'm stepping Wolf and she kills me. <laughs> <laughs> I think Little Sailor's Dark Side would be hilarious. Like, Little oh. Dark Side. Like, yeah, it would be a great Dark Side. Dude, I think the scariest thing ever is if I put Sayla in a ghost face costume and just let her run around the house. <laughs> I would really probably poop my pants. And, and I don't even know it's her. I'm still like, oh! Okay, Brian, you're number um, five. I wouldn't. So, since the name of the movie is Superman Legacy, and you're going to bring in Damian Wayne, and they, remember, they said, he said, James Gunn said that Breathing the Bold and Damian Wayne's just part. Of that first part, I think the movie should end with the birth of John Kent, and I because I want a Super Sons movie. <laughs> yeah, dude, I have you read the Tomasi run yet? No, no, no. Okay, no. You're gonna in love chron- it. In my chronological reading, I am at Flash Rebirth. I just finished Final Crisis and Bow for the Cow, so I'm on. I'm about to finish uh, Re- Flash Rebirth. Um. Because a lot of the Tomasi stuff is what they pulled for the movie, the Battle of the Super Sons. I love the Tomasi Super Sons run. I, I love that the John Kent like at that age. Once again, Bendis. But six Spider-Man Bendis. Why is he Bendis? Occasional Daredevil. Bendis Solomon <laughs> Brian Michael Bendis is a comic book writer who recently finished writing Superman, and he did some things in the book that we didn't really like. So we 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 always reference how we don't like what Bendis did. Okay, two things that I'm, I put in my it's a, whatever, I don't care, doesn't really matter to me were the trunks and the yellow S on the back of the cape. That's what you don't want? That's, that's, that's my want? I don't care. It's, it's on my – it's on my – I can take it or leave it because I kind of like Mister, both ways. you are literally wearing red trunks right now. I have on red shorts. And with, a Superman with shirt. With a Superman shirt. Yep. And, and look at me. I only have a soccer, Boom. I, I have a soccer shirt with, with some space PJs. You look great. I know I do. And that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't. <laughs> why, why are you like this internet? <laughs> so, okay. So now we're going to start with don'ts. I'll start. And then we'll go Brian, sure. Solomon, and James. Okay. <laughs> uh, my first I don't want it to be Chris, Chris Reeve 3.0 Amen Okay Good call. I say 3.0 because basically Superman Returns was 2.0 Sure was So that's my number one Is I don't want that Brian I do not want Lex Luthor in that movie Ooh I'm just going to throw this out there If he's in it a mention of him is fine. One or two scenes of like him and Lex Tower watching or observing. Him being well, mentioned well, is great. I don't need him to be an active participant. Participa- that, that's what I'm saying. Plot. That's what I'm saying. Because because I, I think I talked to you about this. Maybe James <coughs> was in it too. But I I would like Lex Luthor to kind of be a Palpatine. Like We uh, didn't touch on this because then we talked yeah, about yeah. President Luthor. Yeah. Because I, I would love to see him president. Because that's one um, of mine is, is one thing I had on my I once, but I I didn't include it in my top five as president. Luthor. I mean, you have to have Lex, but but let's 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 look at this man. Every single film adaption of Superman had Lex in it. Man, I mean, didn't. all Christopher Reeve movies except three had Lex. Man, still didn't have Lex. Uh, he, Luke Corp gets referenced three or four times. Uh, I know he wasn't there, but you eventually got Lex. Well, I mean, yeah, because you eventually anyway, have to get there. I, I just don't want the bad guy to be Lex. 
because there's your key. That's that's the main thing I'm when I say. There's your key. I right don't there. want Lex to be that guy. That's the key. Him not the antagonist. He's just there. Solomon, you go. Something you don't want in a new Superman. I don't game. want Kryptonite. I don't want you Kryptonite. Ooh. I don't want it mentioned in the movie because I feel like it's in all the Superman movies, and I'm like, okay, I'm getting tired of looking in every Superman movie. Okay, James, you, your turn. <coughs> um, well, <laughs> opposite of what Brian said earlier, I no, don't cool. want trunks. Um, <laughs> I uh, yeah, I don't want. Yeah, yeah. Well, I prefer well, the suit well, to not have it. Um, right. If there are multiple time periods in the movie, I wouldn't mind seeing multiple suits and having the trunks be one of them. But for, for the multiple suits, I kind of like the idea of him having like basically like displays. It can be digital or actual like past suit just hanging up. In the, like he's wearing his newest one, but he has like his hall of suits. And then we see kind of a timeline of suits. Once again, if it's Superman Legacy, it's kind of hard. It's kind of weird to say the movie Superman Legacy unless the legacy is his son. Thank you. Without junk, you know what I'm saying? Without, you gotta have junk with it being a young Superman. Like, hey, we want to encompass your whole career, but you've only been active for three years. So, all right. My next, I don't want. I really don't want the American way mentioned, used in the concept. We've talked about this before on the podcast of what that was created by the radio show. And it was, you know, World War II time. So I am what the American way is now. And I think that Superman has transcended as a character. So I like the better tomorrow. And if this is going to be a legacy, and if, like you and I talked about, Brian, about being the man of tomorrow, I think the better tomorrow would be a better Use. So that's well, my number two. Well, before we do that, that's the opposite. I want the American way. From the mind of the eight-year-old, he wants the American way. Brian, yours. Um, I think we. I mean, I think we already touched on this. Um, but I, you know, like, I don't, I don't want an origin story for sure. Um, but also, um. <laughs> Dang it, my mind went blank. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't want an origin story. I kind of want him to be established. Um, I don't want him to die. Uh, so maybe a mixture of two and three here of what I don't want. I, I don't. I don't want this to be leading up to or include a death of Superman. I feel that death of Superman has been done so much. Um, unfortunately, Zack Snyder didn't get to tell his whole story. So when they killed Superman and Batman were Superman, like there was no feeling. <laughs> I'm, me. I'm I don't want him to die. I'm completely fine with that. It's been too much. You want him to die? You're no, okay with him dying? I don't want him dead. No. I'm I'm tired of that period because we talked about that before. But I do think they could backdoor it and with the comment from Final Crisis or Infinite Crisis that Batman says to Superman that the last time he ever inspired. Oh, I want to hear that line so bad. When he died. <laughs> And have that kind of like, oh. You have inspired people since you died, Clark. And have that kind of as it happened in the background. And if they do ever want to like revisit it, That's fair. That's you fair. do it in a flashback. Like, I think it would be how cool it would be if you open a movie and it's like 20 minutes of just Superman battling <coughs> Doomsday. And then it cuts to now and it's like Superman having a reoccurring nightmare and this fear that Doomsday could come back or something. Hmm. Just saying. All right. Someone, do you have another that you don't want in the movie? Oh, yes, I do. Um, I actually have two more. Okay, go for it. I don't... I don't want Zod mission. You don't want Zod? Because... I mean, I can get behind that, honestly. Because I just... Zod's in a lot of movies. Yeah. I'm, right, which is why I said I didn't want Alex, so I'm with you. I'm... I, I, I want this movie to be... Like a Brainiac movie. It, ma- it literally makes sense. It, he, you're absolutely correct, um, Sam. But can I do my other one? Yeah. <coughs> Let's try that out. You just need to get some okay. water after you say your next one. All right. Um, 
Um, okay. I'm ready. Um. I. Fought. If this can happen in the movie. We introduce something that's called pink kryptonite. Okay. Pink kryptonite is a thing. It never gets talked about much. I don't even they changed its power before too, so I don't even remember. What what power, what power is it? Like pink my kryptonite? Kryptonite? Yeah. Oh we can't talk about pink kryptonite with your son here. So what? as the as a DC Comics historian, <laughs> we cannot talk about pink kryptonite. <laughs> <laughs> For all those are someone's looking at us like why why? Yeah. Um It's weird, Solomon. The sixties were a weird time. It was a very weird time. Please tell We'll talk about uh, it. I'll talk to you about Pink Kryptonite when you're older. I never thought I would say that long. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about it later, Solomon. Me and you'll just sit and have a man to man talk. <laughs> okay, my next one is um <laughs> I, I, I actually already have in here that Brian said no origin slash. I don't want to be like Superman Returns. Uh, I don't want this movie to be dictated and done from a production point of view by gatekeepers. Like I appreciate listening to the fan, okay. listening to the fans, but I don't want it to be so beholden to everything. Like the comics themselves are expanded. Um, I just don't want it to get bogged down and feel like because I mean, I just don't want it to be Superman Returns point two point oh. Like that's my biggest fear. Like honestly, that is my that they're gonna try to go too far the other way back. And that's why I say like I reference Superman and Lois as being like a great middle de- ground of Superman um for everything. But once again, there are people aren't gonna watch a show, they're gonna watch a movie. But what's your next you don't want, Brian? It's it's mine. <laughs> is it you? Go for it, yeah. <laughs> Um, so what I, um, it was, uh, um, I don't want it to, um, now I, <laughs> we think about this movie so much, our brain just shuts off. There's, there's, there's so no, many. I just I was thinking about it over and over and over again. My point, and now like I'm like it's my turn. Like wait, hold on, what? I'm working. <clears throat> um, I don't want. So you you were saying it a lot. Like I want it more like the comics. I don't want it to be. Uh yeah, like uh, Krypton. And the uh, the fortress and everything. I don't want it to be just bland white crystal. It's the aesthetic is just horrible. It looks. It doesn't look like anything that can be lived in by anybody. Like I like where I like how in in Krypton and stuff like. It was a world. People still had to live in it. They had to live in it. They had to work in it. They had to rest in it. Yeah. You want you to know, feel so like- I, I want, yeah, I want like, like if it's, if it's the fortress, if the fortress is like the only connection we have to like Krypton um, before, because I, I would think that you would get more first-hand look at Krypton through the eyes of Supergirl as opposed to through the lens of Superman. I have more to say to that here in a second. So I, I want – so I don't want Krypton to be a, a nothingless white mass of nothing, you know, jagged edge and, and nothing. I don't want that. It makes no. It makes no sense. So my last. Oh, Krypton right there. I don't want. I don't want Krypton in the movie. Much like the pitch that you and I came up with, Brian, when we were talking about things. I mm-hmm. would. I don't want Krypton in the movie. Like James just said, I think it'd be better if the only look of Krypton we get is the fortress itself, and then in the Supergirl movie, that's where you actually meet Krypton the planet. 
So, any any other last I don't want in the new movie, Solomon or James? Um, I I have one more, and this one is what want you. I okay. If I put it back, I do not want. I will do not want. All right, you're holding some super suspense, man. So, sorry, so, sorry. I'm try, still trying to think. Um, it takes effort, Um, I don't want bizarre. I'm gonna clap that. <laughs> I don't want bizarro. Yeah. <laughs> I'm clapping that because Bizarro comes Bizarro speed. Um, so I mean, my my last one was kind of specific to the look, okay. You know, but I also my uh, my also is I don't want it like you said earlier to be Christopher Reeve 3.0 to be Superman the movie 3.0 Superman Returns 2.0. I don't want it to be. I don't want it to be what Superman has been on the big screen before. If they, you know, Superman is incredibly rich in the comics with everything he does and everything he, he has, like he has a zoo in the fortress for, for um, endangered animals, you know, um, like, I, yeah, I just I want Superman to be more than he is in on film. I, that's why I say like Superman and Lois has create has found that sweet spot of balancing the different on screen versions. But all right, so that was our wants and don't wants. I want one more don't want. Okay, one more from Brian. I don't want to see Batman. I don't want to see anybody else. I, I don't want to see the Legion. I want Superman to be the star. I agree with him being the star. Would you would you take them in a post credit scene? Man, well, maybe. Maybe Batman and Batman in a post credit, that'll be fine. Okay. But I, I I I want I want Superman to be the star. I want Superman <laughs> to be the focus. I want Superman to be the blueprint. I want him to be the foundation. Okay. He's I, I, just, Superman. I just wrote the uh the post credit scene. Post credit scene, Superman visits Batman in the Batcave, comes in, little chit chat. Superman says he has news. Batman says, I have news too. Batman says, I just learned that I have a son, no, Damien, Natalia. And Superman chuckles and says, Well, that's funny because I'm about to be a father too. Boom! There it is. There it is, my friends. There it is. But how much, how old are you gonna have Damien be, Damien be? Well, the, well, Damien when he's born, he, he's genetically aged up. That's great. So, yeah, but John would be just born. Yeah, I know. We'll figure that out. It's we'll figure, We'll get there. Um, we'll get there. Comics, or we flip it around. Um, and Clark's. I say you know do, that, do your John kid aging up you, to eight years old. Yeah, there, there you go. go. All right, there back is. up. All right. You know what, my you know. You know what I want my sequel to be? What? What to do? It to be the Super Sons. The Super Sons. It's it's a reboot. You know what? You and I are actually going to start reading the Super Sons comics since you've gotten really better at reading. I'm gonna <coughs> we're gonna start reading those together. Okay. So now we're gonna move on and we're gonna start talking about the Super Girl. Uh, the new film, Legion of Heroes, of Superheroes, and I, I put my notes, first of all, it should have been called Supergirl and the Legion. I think it would have helped, because I feel like just Legion of Superheroes is not a great title to sell anything. What do you think, James? Um, I mean, yes, I, I do kind of agree. Uh, Supergirl is the star of the film. Uh, we It could have been Supergirl and the Legion of Superheroes. 
um, Supergirl and the Legion. Um, I mean, but it but it does tell you exactly what you're gonna be what you're gonna be dealing with. So, so I, I wasn't I wasn't pressed on the fact of it being a different title. Oh, I know. I just yeah. I just I just think it's kind of like how they threw Batman on like Batman. Arca, what was it? Assault on Arkham. Yeah, it was just a Suicide Squad movie where they threw Batman's name on it. I was I gonna say that. that one is yeah exactly. They threw Batman's name on a Suicide Squad Squad movie, and this one like also, it's, it's either Supergirl or Legion. And I mean, you say Legion of Superheroes. I mean, you kind of know what you're somewhat in for, but then you got the added bonus of getting it through Supergirl's lens. Um, what do you call it? The next thing I was going to say is, um, I totally forgot. Dang it. Oh, Solomon, tell everyone what you're wearing right now. What, what's on your hand? Oh, my Legion ring. Solomon is wearing his Legion ring. Because he is prepared to be a legionnaire. You know, that is something that we didn't get in this movie. I, I was the legion rings. We didn't get them till the end. And what I found striking was the legion, when they show at the end, have their rings. But the main legion people who were there the whole time did not have rings. Well, that's because most of the people at the academy were not legion. I don't know about the three. I would have That's to watch it again to see if Timber Wolf, Chemical King, and and Shadow Lass have their Legion rings. Those are the ones I'm talking about. Yeah, they didn't. They didn't. Nope. Uh, what I don't you, know. What uh, is your favorite Legion? Because because all of the all of the other students, Triplicate Girl, um, uh, Monel, Supergirl, Brainiac Five, um, oh, Phantom oh. Girl. Well, you know, the, the few others, Bouncing Boy, they they weren't Legionnaires. Right. Like Fallen Arms? Yeah. Well, Brian just had to use the bathroom, so we're just going to pause it here so I don't have to keep filler. Okay, okay, so wait, quick. Break okay, news, guys. I want to add something. Hold on. While I was taking a pee and doing my best thinking, um, two things. One thing I don't want... Uh, I don't want any adult humor. Uh, sometimes, sometimes James Gunn can speak in that adult humor. Yeah. Like, kind of how he did in Guardians a little bit. Um, I don't want any of that. I want this to be a pure, hopeful, Boy Scout type of movie. <laughs> Whatever. Um, but I was also thinking, you know, the only Legion story that I like is that Legion story from Final Crisis. Where the main villain is Superboy Prime. Yeah. And as much as I want to see Brainiac, what if the storyline for Superman Legacy is something like, like, I'm going to collect to you. <laughs> you know, I've been collecting Supermans. What if he's been collecting Supermans for different worlds? That'd be crazy. And oh. he has Superboy Prime. Let me ask you this. Superboy Prime wants to take over completely. Do you think James Gunn should direct? Uh, no, I think Brad Bird should. Unless, unless, unless James Gunn is really trying to stretch his legs as a director and direct something with a completely different tone than the majority of his work, I would say no. And I'm with you. I don't want him directing. It's as simple as that. Nope. Okay. Moving on. We have breaking news. We just got a new poster for Shazam and the first official teaser poster for The Flash. The Shazam poster is that same background that we saw on like the scooter one, but it's Billy Shazam pointing at a dragon, like roaring at him. Can I see it? Yeah. I need to see it. I love dragons. That's why. So, I love Shazam. You love Shazam? Who doesn't love Shazam? I James, do. you love Shazam? Black Adam. I do. Yeah, Black Adam doesn't like Shazam. Sometimes. 
It's all about family. So. Why do we get the joke? We do get the joke. Huh? It's all about family. Dude, I, I just... I just That's want awesome. Vin Diesel to show up. I <laughs> just want to use what he said. That's awesome. Vin That's Diesel awesome. shows up. Like, how great wait, wait, a cameo would no, that be? Wait, wait, ready? This is a little piss off, everyone. Vin Diesel shows up in Shazam as Black Adam since The Rock didn't want to do it. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my, oh my gosh. Oh, that would, oh, that would yeah, light the Vin internet Diesel. on fire. Oh, my gosh. If Vin Diesel showed up as Black Adam, oh, man. Damn, so damn. And then there is that beauty. the first teaser yeah, for good. the Flash movie. Yeah, that's good. Oh, man. I will say the Flash. I'm so freaking excited for this movie. Yeah. Can't even. Oh. Dude, I almost got faked out today. Even though Ezra, Ezra Miller, you know, I don't know what we're going to do with you. But I'm so excited for this movie still. <laughs> so it's it's the Flash standing on the platform in the Batcave. Looking out at the, like, there's light shining in, and then there's, like, the bat wing on top of him. I, it says, Worlds Collide. That's the tagline. Batman 89. I like this poster, but at the same time, I don't like this poster. Don't ruin this for me, okay? I haven't been this pumped since Green Lantern 2011, and we all know what happened there, okay? <laughs> but if this was the second poster, it'd be great. But... This is the Flash's movie, but where does your eye go to? Where's what? So we're looking. Like, this is the Flash's first movie, mm-hmm. and you're, this is the first official poster of his movie. But where does your eye go to? The you Batman. The Batman symbol. Which is why I don't want Batman in the Superman movie. So I'm just saying, like, <laughs> I think the first poster should have been more of a traditional, like, this is the Flash. Okay. We should have got an actual, like, the Flash and him running or something, the Speed Force or whatever. And then the second poster is, um, this should have been, what do you call it? The second poster should have had the Batman. So, but that that's our breaking news. And now we're going to talk about the new DC animated home video. Entitled The Legion. The Legion of, Legion of Superheroes. Thank, Dad, you forgot that word. All right. I think the Flash poster should look like this. <laughs> if I can show it to your thing. Can I see? Oh, I don't know. It's not showing code. What's the code? I don't know. I think it's frozen. It's frozen? Yeah, I think what happens is... He broke it. It froze. Hit your Apple TV thing. Oh. Go type in 363. I did. Bros. All right, we were casting to the Apple TV to like show the photos and stuff. And all of a sudden, it just kind of pulls out of it. Yeah, pause. All right, here, hand me the remote. But. Here. See, now it should. Oh, it didn't do that. Tom, where's the TV remote? Right here. Here it is. Thank you. But anyways, so Brian's going to show us a poster. Anyway. But the newest chapter of the Tomorrowverse films came out today. Or not this week, should I say. How many times have you watched it, James? Uh, twice now. Okay. I watched it twice this week. Anyway, it should look like that. It's just simple. Yes. Yeah. Exactly, Brian. Just screenshot your thing and throw it in check. (laughs) So, I'm going to say this as we talk about this film. The Tomorrowverse right now makes up of six movies. And I wrote down the IMDb ratings because I find them a little interesting. Superman Man of Tomorrow is a 6.4. Justice Society is a 6. Long Halloween is a 7.6. Green Lantern is a 6.1. And House of Mysteries, I didn't get a chance. I forgot to write down. Um, and then this gets a 5.7. Like this? Legion got a 5.7? Yeah. And I'll tell you why, because Legion sucks. Um, no, it did So, I find it just interesting. And the Legion, or House of Mystery got a 6.2. Alright. So, the beginning of this film, we start on Krypton. And we see two, blo- two blondes racing. 
and they're in like kind of tracksuit, jumpsuit looking things. Yeah. And we find out it is Kara and Alora. And you know what I found most interesting, James, in this scene? I'm here too. I watched it. Yeah, I actually watched it. Watch movie. But you didn't watch Wonder Woman with us. What Wonder Woman? 84. No, why would I do that? Why would anybody do that? So what I found most interesting is Kara cuts through the grass and her mother doesn't go, you cheated, Kara. <laughs> you, found a, you found a shortcut and you did not earn the glory. You cheated. I thought the same day thing watching that movie. I was like, I was just like, yeah, see, she didn't cheat. Her mom's like, way to applaud the ingenuity. Her mom cheated first. So. Alora cheated first. There is no cheating. They're mother and daughter. There is no cheating. They just run. <laughs> and then we find out, like, her. <laughs> I can't. I was going to say something funny. Never mind. Hold on. Don't come to me. We find out that Alora basically is in charge of Argo City. She has meetings with the Science Council and the Guild. And, you know, she has this conversation with her daughter that, you know, you come first. And they talk, they mentioned Uncle Jarrell's new baby. So that was cool. We see Carr gets accepted into the military guild. And then this is what, this is what kills me. There is no Dana, only Zool. There it is. <laughs> um, why do superheroes only have one parent? It's a, it's a, it's, it's, it's a, it's part of the contract. But it's like they only superhero. You have to have dead parent. But but it's not even dead parent. Just like Car and her, it's like Car here. It's all about Car and her mother. Yeah. There's no mention of Zorro. There's no mention of father. What or any in any way. And then usually with Jarrell, they barely mention Lara as if she's less of a part of of Clark Superman's life. Well, yeah. they, okay. So is they always Laura, is Laura Jarrell's sister? Yeah. Well, they imply it is like. He's his sister in this one. It is. She's. Not, well, that's what I'm saying. She only talks to her mom and then mention, and mentions Uncle Jarrell. So like, there's never any conversation. Well, Laura was like Jory or whatever. Like, gave a little nickname while the uh, was going down. Yeah, because she said she talked to Jarrell about the pods, and she was using his because uh, he had been talking to the science council. And they didn't listen, and she was looking at his schematics for his prototype. No, no, yeah, her, she was so. she was developing escape pods based on his, but in secret. So the process was slower going. More is Jarrell's sister. A woman takes her uh, the husband's. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Okay, yeah, you make sure yeah, you're right. They oh, dropped like it was Lara. Whatever. It was Lara. My wife Vaughan. didn't take my name. Whatever. It was Lara Lorvon, and then she became Lara L. Yeah. And that's why Kara is Kara Zor-El. It's because she takes her whole father's last name. Women on Krypton take their whole father's last name as their surname. So she's not just Kara. Grundy doesn't rhyme with Monday. <laughs> yeah, so we yeah, see... Grundy does not m- rhyme with Monday. We get a very heartbreaking scene of Alora trying to set off the pods and only one pod comes online to work. And did you guys catch what the code name was? Of what for the program to send the pods? What? No, it's NZ. NZ. Mm-hmm. What was? What is that? What's NZ? Do you remember, James? NZ. Kara in Superman the animated series is Kara NZ because technically in comics at the time there was no Supergirl. Oh. No yeah, she's, she's not. She's, she's not Kryptonian. She's not actually his cousin. In, in she's the more Daxamite, but they never call her Daxamite, and she's Kara in Z. Oh, in the ninety, well, in the ninety, she was Matrix. That's why she's Kara in Z. I mean, because there, there was no Silver Age. She was like Kara. Well, she was uh, oh, crap. No, Silver Age. She was Kara. Then, like, for a little time, she was like, wasn't she Linda? Linda. Oh, yeah. There's the Linda Danvers, Linda Lee. Linda, Linda uh, Lee, yeah. And all that. But I'm just saying, like, I would say that. the NZ was in the animated series. So it was kind of a little nice nod. And then we see her sent out, and she actually watches Krypton explode. Mm-hmm. I thought that was, like, she was facing it. It wasn't like one of those where, like, she her pod's going out. It's behind her, like she was seeing it from the front. Yeah, 
And, you know, you mentioned not having the father around, like, it was pretty quick, uh, like, when it happened, the, the, the sky started changing, and she got her to an escape pod. And then we have car takes off on Earth, and we see the rocket ship approach Earth, and then boom. He's like in an outdoor mall. And what I marked down, it's interesting how in the Tomorrowverse, they can skip around and then we just kind of backfill in everything. Like they're not really taking their time to like, here's how Kara first meets Superman. Here's this. There's so much that happens. Huge time jumps. Off screen. I love how she's wearing a flash shirt though. Yeah. And I love the line where like, like where Clark wrote, or the letter of Clark gave her, like, hey, you know, you know, don't don't stand out. You know, wear wear this outfit. Wear and regular clothes. Wear regular clothes. She wearing this flash shirt, big glasses. She looks like she's like straight out of the nineties. Yeah, she does. <laughs> and then she fights Solomon Grundy. And what's the line, Solomon? Monday doesn't rhyme with Grundy. Yeah. So like and then even so then Supergirl's fighting him and then Batman and Superman show up. And I love the interaction of Batman and Superman. How Batman just kind of goes, and Grundy turns, and Superman flies by and punches him. But I love when the Flash shows up. It's like that guy who thinks Grundy rhymes with Monday. <laughs> I love it. That was that was a good moment. I love it. I love um, that even for even for one scene, Matt Bomer's back to do the voice. Yes, yes. I want. All right, we'll get there. Hold on. Jensen does a great Batman voice. I like the line that they talk about Kara, Kara not caring as she just like destroys. Stuff. Because that's how Batman is, man. Batman gives you the facts. Um, He's like, you know, she has these powers, she doesn't know how to control them. But the worst part is she doesn't care. I just like how she hasn't adapted to we don't have robots to do everything. So like, can't you just get your servant robots to fix it? Or construction robots? Or. <laughs> Government yeah, issue yeah. robots. She's just like that was that was that was a nice touch. Um, but then we have the scene of she's on the she's at the farm with Cal and they're talking and she's basically like Batman wants to kick me off the planet and he's like there's another way and he throws I was like what does he have but it's a time bubble. Have they used these in the comics, Brian? Do you like like to. To go with the Legion? So. Yeah, like a time bubble like that. Like I've always seen like more of like a time sphere ship or like the using the Legion ring itself. Um, mostly... It reminded know, me of like a mother box, but it wasn't. Mostly it's a little bit like a mother box. Like, so they, they use these, they do use these kind of like time spheres, if you will, to open up like doorways. Mm-hmm. Um, in some stories, it is the Legion ring. Like, the Legion Ring lets you fly and kind of go through time and stuff. Like, it's not necessarily like a time bubble. It's like, it's just a technology that the uh, that Brainy creates that just kind of lets you kind of go in and out of the future or whatever. It, it depends on the story. Like, it changes, it changes pure the story. Like, I, I don't know how else to put it. Like, in, in, in some stories, the time trapper just takes people out of time and just moves them. Like, it, like it just... Cause it, my it's, thing is, it's not called a time bubble, but it's, it's like it's like the sphere. It reminds me of the yeah. Omega Hedron from Supergirl the movie. Yeah, they've they've <laughs> called it a time sphere in a lot of different versions. Yeah, But I've always seen what it James like said. a sphere. Yeah, it's you a know, sphere. They're, they're in something like a ship that they did on Young Justice. Well, well, some, but sometimes the story like has, you know, uh, Lightning Lad and Saturn Girl and you know whatever. They go in a time sphere and then they go back in time, it, like in the ship. There's been some stories where they they just go back in time, like it just they just use the ring or whatever. Like it just depends on who's writing it. There's no consistency to Legion. So Solomon got most excited when we, when all of a sudden they go through the time bubble. And who do we see, Solomon? Pharaoh lad. lad. Solomon goes, there's, there he is! Pharaoh Lad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <true> that's <laughs> He saved everybody by sacrificing himself. 
I'm like, dang, that's my son right there. Yeah, we just watched that. That was pretty sweet. <laughs> and then we're like, we're in the 31st century, and Kara meets. Well, Cal first explains that he met the Legion. So there's a whole big story that we like we talked about like, off screen. Like Clark's just jumping around. So we don't even have like a meeting the Legion or anything like that. It just it just happened. Um and then it cuts back to a break in at Star Labs where we have purple soldiers fight Batman and they use a capsule and we see Brainiac's head. And that's the last time we're in uh the past, because then yeah, that was the that was the only kind of jarring cut. It's like it automatically goes back. It doesn't tell you that it's in the past. Yeah. It just kind of cuts back and then it's like Star Labs. Wait. And then you see this and the first time I watched it I was like, "Oh, is that Brainiac's head?" And then <laughs> like even after watching it at the end of the first one, I I I didn't connect back like, "Oh yeah, that was Brainiac's head." But after watching it a second time, I was like, "Oh yeah, that's the that's the the head that um, Flash caught that kryptonite bullet and sent it back towards him and shot him in the head." Yep, I told totally how to like I kind of brain farted that that happened in that movie. Mm-hmm. Like I was like, "Oh yeah, that did really happen already in this year because so much has been off to the side." And then so we find out they're called the Circle, Our original or the Dark Circle. They look like they're playing Squid Game. They'll say what? They look like Squid Game. Oh my god. Sweet. Don't talk about that, Daddy. Dark Circle. Um, Don't, yeah, they one look comment like that he did say about the time bubbles is they're fixated on points in time. And Kara is now at the Legion Academy. And we learned that Lightning Lad is now, his skin color has changed. I can't always really say African American because Lightning Lad's not from America. But he is now ethnically been changed as a, you know, from being a redheaded man to a now, I don't know what to call it. I don't know what to call it. Like, he's black now. That's cool. I think, um, he's a man. I think he might have, I think he might have, his race might have changed in, in the comics in me. I, I think, I think he was different in Bendis's run. It might have been. It's all Legion. Cool. It's all good. I don't care. It, it might have been. It just might have been the first time I've seen it. That's all. Because what threw me was the way his costume design. I thought it was Black Lightning for a second. Like just first, I was like, "Wait, he looks like Black Lightning." And I was like, "Wait, maybe that's what they're implying." Oh, it's Lightning Lad. Future Black Lightning. Triplicate Girl has also swapped races. Um, so that's good. Duplicate Girl. Now she's Duplicate Girl or Duo. Duo damsel. Gotta love the alliterations. Do a Dula Dead. Not Dula Dead. That's a whole different character, Brian. Yeah, yeah. That's Joker's daughter, which makes no sense. I know who she is. But we meet Monel. Joker's daughter is. And Monel introduces himself and he says, you know, he had changed his name. And Cal doesn't say anything, so immediately I'm like, okay. Still, once again, we have Monel without really giving a real reason why he's named Monel. He showed up on a Monday. Um, yeah, but they, that's never been identified in anything. That's how the comics do. But I'm saying, like, every time we use Monel. Did it? He has Gr- it. Grundy, I don't know, but I always like that. Grundy you? does not remind me of Monday. Get it? Yeah. Monday. But, like, in this. Like. That's his name, but in Supergirl, he's Monel. They never address the fact that he has the last name L that it was supposed to be given to him by Superman. So they just used his name. His, a Daxamite prince would not be named Monel. And then in this, he says he changed his name to Monel. And then it even incorporates some sort of subplot where he's obsessed with the L's. That could have worked of why he named himself Monel. Once again, they don't they get his origin wrong. Just saying. They did a lot of things wrong with him. <clears throat> but whatever. And we saw that twist. I saw the twist coming like as soon as Brian Clyde showed up. <laughs> we have Kara uh, meeting Dawnstar, and Kara then fights Brainiac Five because she doesn't, and no one really stops her. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, because we learned that Brainiac Five is actually a cadet for the 
there at the Legion. He sparked. Mm -hmm. Pretty much, yeah. Wait. And um, we meet Bouncy Boy and Timberwolf. I gotta say, Timberwolf looks like Wolverine. Without the claw, he looks like Wolverine. He did. And yes. Bouncing Boy did not look cool. We prefer the, yeah. ju- the Legion animated series Bouncing Boy. Yeah. We get President Saturn Girl mentioned. I thought that was cool. And then we meet that there was Brainiac 2, 3, and 4. Which? 4 is basically a serial killer. Yes. Well, that was neat. I, thought that, I think that could be kind of a cool story with the different Brainiacs. Um, but we also meet Invisible Kid. With my favorite. Yep, Phantom Girl. And Arms Fall Off Boy. Well, they only fall off sometimes. Who then changes his name to Arms Fall Off Man. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was kind of funny how in this one, when they fell off, it was kind of just like energy. It was like a blue light in between. Yeah. It, it didn't pop out at the socket. There's no TDK. Yeah, it was no TDK. <laughs> Your name is Letters? All names are Letters, bitch. <laughs> uh, but, um, so we learned that they're competing basically to be in the Legion, and there's only one Legion spot open. One. Just one. Out of Supergirl, Brainiac 5, mon Bouncing Boy, Triple Kick Girl. Mostly all the ones that we actually know, except Lightning Lad and uh, Saturn Girl, are cadets. Go figure. And I put in my notes, hey, James, it's like the episode we just watched. (laughs) Yeah, pretty much. I do want to say that I really did... uh, what do you call it? Like the voice of Kara in this. Yeah, yeah it's kind of cool how it, it just, it's kind of cool how it lined up for us doing the show, um, finishing the first season, and then this movie comes out. Um, it's kind of like I planned it that way. <laughs> kind of. You think? Um, you know, seeing a lot of those characters in the show being some of the main characters in the movie. It was cool. Um, I did like the actress. I, I liked her voice. Um, and then while I was watching the second time, I went to look to see who she was and I was, and I recognize her from, um, from zombies. Bella yeah. watched that on Disney. <laughs> Bella watched it. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Jane. So she, she was on that and it says she's, um, Mary Winchester on the Winchesters. Yep. That's, that's where I like kind of pinpointed her. The Winchesters, which only watched one episode because then I gave Jania a super long lecture on how in unfactual this entire show was, unless it's one of the multi earths, then it doesn't matter. But this isn't the canonized Winchester family. And then we decided just to wait for HBO Max for the rest of the season. <laughs> so. But as the episode goes on, basically what we find out is Brainiac overheard his family talking about it. They were going to steal the Miracle Machine. And we'll get to the Miracle Machine more in a minute. And that the Dark Circle is coming. And we see the Triplicate Girl get murdered. And what we find out is it was only one of her triplets. It was like her third. So now she's, like we said, duo damsel. <laughs> she called herself Duplicate Girl. Then they tried know. to give her some other names. Tried to call her Duo Damsel for the alliteration. Invisible Kid said that and she was like, oh, well, let me see. Um, she didn't look too too hyped about that. But we find out that the dark circle is actually led by Monel and that Brainiac five was, you know, being good, but the Legion thought he was being bad because no one could figure out how he got voted in. We find out he hacked the system trying to protect them. You know, he doesn't have the greatest social skills. And, um, well, it still does not make sense. He hacked into the systems to protect, and their their plan to uh, steal the miracle machine 
instead of just tell the Legion, because neither Brainiac nor Supergirl feel the Legion will actually believe them. So I thought that was interesting. And how he had to do like it, what I wrote down was like code Tetris to get through the uh Which is so weird because Tetris is hard. I mean I used to have old Game Boy yeah. and just sell it. Well the Tetris is very hard. Which literally I like playing Tetris. So, he starts to solve that, and what we find is, throughout this movie, they talk about Brainiac 5 being the only 12th level intellect. We find out that his, the Brainiac 2, 3, and 4 were actually 10th level intellects. What do you think about that, James? Um, I, I mean, I liked it, you know, that it sets him apart from the others. I did like the introduction uh, at least the the legionnaires talking about the other ones getting up through four and just calling him a serial killer. Yeah. So. Um, but yeah, I thought that was interesting. Yeah, I I mean I like that it sets him apart that he's the only twelfth level intellect. Mm. So, poor Brian. Allergies just suck. Sucks. I hate this time of year. You know, which is funny. You know, it didn't suck. Legion of Superheroes? Brainiac. So, (laughs) and Legion. I I paused real quick because I wanted to get your thought here, my friend. So, we, me and Solomon both were like, we were caught off guard a little bit, especially Solomon. When Monel stabbed Kara with the kryptonite dagger. I couldn't believe it. Sela was in shock. Solomon. I didn't did, see it coming at all. How did you feel, Solomon? I, I, I was like, okay, I, I was like, I was like, oh, I, I did not know this. Completely. Well, well, I thought um on the fall off fall off man yeah. was expected like the You thought he was a bad guy? Yeah. But it seemed seemed kinda weird. Yeah. But I didn't know. ML. Mono? Mo- Mono. He is so weird. Man. I thought it was interesting when he gave the whole speech about elevating like how amazing Krypton was and that how the Legion is part of the rot of society and it's the time of freaks. Like, I really think, uh, like, I think there were some more themes and stuff in mind from his character that we didn't get to touch on. Cause I feel like you could almost do a cool, like, if you're trying to shorthand things, you could kind of make blend Superboy Prime and mon into one character in this universe. And give some interesting Not in my stories. universe. And, yeah, not in your gatekeeping universe. Prime's awesome, dude. He is awesome. He's a little shit. Yeah. And that's why I like him. Makes sense. But what did Mon-El you think? Is, Mon-El, Mon-El needs to stick as one of Superman's greatest like, failures. You see, yeah. that, you see that as one of his failures? Yeah, because because the, the kid gets lead poisoning, which I think is one of the stupidest things in comics, that a Daxamite is basically a Kryptonian, but like you get lead, they're, they're dead forever. No, the lead should just poison him like Kryptonite. It shouldn't like doomed forever but for him to throw him in the phantom zone and have him be in there just like the you know city of candor is bottled and superman can't figure out how to make it bigger like heroes need failures yeah so one th- like one thing that's kind of been in my head as i'm reading grant morris's batman again mm-hmm. is that like th- so it wasn't necessarily grant morrison but stephanie brown comes back and Stephanie Brown got killed in war games. So, like, there's no failure there in Batman's run. You bring Jason Todd back. Jason Todd was the greatest failure Batman ever had. And, like, like heroes need failures. So, so, so if mon becomes, like, a different character, 
and he's not stuck in a fan zone and, you know, being kind of that hero. Like, I don't know. It just eliminates the failures of Superman. Superman, every hero needs to have failures. That's what makes him better. Yes, it does. And, uh, and another note, um, I I like Brainiac 5 in this movie. I did um, I thought he was pretty cool, I mean, because I really like Spock. Um, I thought Brainiac as this mixture of different Brainiacs, like collecting the good parts of other versions of himself, was pretty cool. I wonder why, Brian. Hmm, let me think. We talk about Universal Monsters all the time. Yeah. It made me think very much of Frankenstein's creation. Yeah, that's probably why I really liked it. Exactly, that's what I put on my notes, too. I was like, hmm. <laughs> But, um, I mean, that, that, like, that was pretty cool. And um, I, I like how they tricked him to basically kill himself. Yeah, pretty he pretty cool. much ripped himself to par- ripped himself apart. So, so Solomon, what's hilarious is we just literally watched The Lord of the Rings, okay? Where there's literally a scene of, you know, an orc getting his head cut off. And we watched it with the kids. I'm a great parent. Um, yeah, you are. And then, you know, and then we're watching this Legion movie. And the brain and Crips and call and goes, should I be watching this? <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, you're fine, dude. It's, it's cool. <laughs> just like, oh. Um, I so, saw his, Brian, I saw his bones. you just finished reading Final Crisis. I did. And Final Crisis touches on the Miracle Machine. So, yes. what did you think of the Miracle Machine in this? Because this is the one part where Solomon was asking, what's going on right now? And I was like, well, uh, science-y stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, because even me, I feel the like... machine really, that can rewrite reality. Yeah, I was like... I didn't know they explained it well enough, but what do you think about it in this, Brian? Um, well, there's another angle of Dubai on the TV. <laughs> the, okay, I don't like I don't like things introduced into stories or comic books that can just kind of solve any problem. You're not the Deus Machina lover. No. Like, in the, in the Miracle Machine, like, so in Final Crisis, Brain in it, Brain Act 5 shows Superman the machine for, like, five seconds. And then Superman goes back in the past. Yep. So, for Superman to see that machine for five seconds, like, just just the outside part or whatever, I mean, it's Superman, sure, or whatever, but to know how to build it after, like, watching it for five seconds, yeah, so, I mean, that's just a little too much. But this is Grant Morrison, who, you know, makes Batman like a god. So, why not Superman? Um, it's, I mean, I don't, I don't, I mean, it's the 31st century, so, like, they should have cures for things and diseases and, and all that stuff. But have a machine that basically is, like, the god machine. I mean, I guess, it kind of, I guess it kind of makes sense, but, like, I don't like, I don't. I don't like having a weapon or something that can just alter alter reality and just fix things. Um, I don't know. I agree. I mean, I mean, I don't. It, it doesn't matter to me either way because I just I don't like the Legion. I, I don't think the characters have much depth. I I only like Brainiac Five, Lightning Lad, and Supergirl, and Phantom Girl and Saturn Girl are okay. It's just, yeah. And then at the end, basically, Monel gets the crap beat out of my Supergirl, which was an awesome battle. Then all the Legionnaires show back up. You find out there's been issues, and they show up with their rings. And of course, S- Solomon, are you with us still? Yeah. Who did not show up at the end that we were looking for? Turn around, say it to the mic loud and proud, buddy. Who are we met that wasn't there? Say it. Fun boy. That's right. Where was Sunboy? Where? James, where was Sunboy? I don't know. He's the only Legionnaire that matters. Sunboy. Was he that red and yellow statue or hologram earlier in the... I don't know. I keep trying movie. to explain the problem. There's so many Legionnaires. They just throw people in the background with no names. They're like, eh. It's a Legionnaire. Uh, but uh, I do love... The line about when they say, I, I think they should, 
all should be legionnaires or they're all in. So I like I like that line from I think it was Lightning Lad or the guy that was with him. Cosmic Boy. Was it Cosmic Boy? Yep. Um, because I thought it was funny. Now, I do think there is a post credit scene. There is. And I was kind of bummed at the way it was done because I feel like the first part of the post credit scene is how the movie should have ended. Because the movie just ends right there with them defeating Monel. And I thought there should have been a scene with Kal-El talking to Supergirl since he took her there and said he'd like see how it goes. And the post credit scene picks up and it's Kal-El talking with Supergirl. And Supergirl saying how she loves it there and what's going on with the Legion. She's kind of found her place. And then she introduces Cal to her boyfriend, Brainiac 5, which is hilarious because Brainiac 5 was so scared. And then uh, the time bubble closes and Superman turns. And this is where I think this is actually what should have been the post credit scene. As he turns and there is Batman and we see a giant hole in the ground that's burned. And then a blue beam hits them both and pulls them and there's a hole left. And that's the post credit scene. What did you think it was, Brian? Dr. Manhattan. Okay. <laughs> Solomon, what did you think it was? He's asleep. Solomon said it was dark side. James, your thoughts? Um, I think it's War World. That's where I'm at. Cause that- I don't know what I think. I just saw a big hole and then a little hole and it kind of looked like the atom and it was a blue light. Oh, Dr. Well, Man, which I think would be a stupid move to do. But, you know, we do whatever. know that there is a Justice League War World movie coming later this year. But as we well, as did. we're hoping that it's in continuity. Because it would make the most sense, and I feel like this just pretty much confirms that. Yeah, and I think this might be the um, being abducted to War World type storyline, as opposed to like War World coming to Earth or something. I like it. So my next question is to you guys, what would you rank this out of 10? Four. Brian, you get a four? Yeah. James? Um, well, let me see where I put it on my... Hold on. Don't give me that one. But what, what would you rank it out of 10? Um... I would probably give this um, a 6.5. See, I'm there with you. I'm like between 6.5 and 7. I was going to say maybe 7, but I could be uh, an argument could be made for 7. You know, if it was just the Legion itself, I think it would have definitely been like a 4 to (laughs) 5, you know? If Mm -hmm. this was the story they told, but the fact that it was Supergirl being the main focus from the opening of the movie to the close, that I really, I really liked that elevated it a little bit. And and I like the story that they told with her being from an advanced society on a modern earth and not having, you know, not being able to acclimate and going to a more technologically advanced time being the 31st century and finding See, kind of a home and a life there. I agree with you. I feel like it's really done real well from there. So, okay. So the last thing we're going to do is we have the tomorrow verse films for six movies deep. How would you, how would you rank them? Which one's your favorite to your bottom? Number six. Start with Brian. What's your number one? Or no, what's your number six? Where are the six movies? Did you not get the thing I sent us in the chat to do? I'm spending time with my wife. Multitasking. All right. So the six movies are The Legion. Yep. Superman, Man of Tomorrow. Yep. Batman, The Long Halloween. Green Lantern, Beware My Power. Um, Wonder Woman. Or the Justice Society of World War II and Constantine House of Mysteries. Oh, I haven't watched Constantine yet. So, so that's Brian's number six. 
Solomon's number six is also Constantine. And my number six is also Constantine. My number six is also Constantine, but that's because... Um, it's a short. It's a short. It's a short, and it's and it's very little um it's very little of the the bridge that they kind of made it out to be it's very good but it's not it's not exactly like it's not exactly continuation it's not exactly anything um that leads yeah. into the new it's just kind of like you get to see what happens to him because this was his call yep all right <laughs> So number five, I'll do Solomon's number five. Solomon's number five is World War, uh, Justice Society World War II. And Tyler's number five is also Justice Society World War II. We talked about it, me and Solomon, and we picked those because it pretty much felt like the third act kind of, I think the third act is too much of a shift and takes the focus where we wanted it and became almost another movie. And then we find out that it's actually another world i think that kind of changed our perspective on it but brian what's your number five? Oh, legion legion for real yeah dang dude. all right james your number five um my number five is uh um green lantern beware my power okay all right so now number four Solomon's number four is actually is Superman Man of Tomorrow. And my number four is Green Lantern. My number four is Green Lantern. James, what's your number four? Um Justice Society. Now. Um I will say that. It's probably the third act in Green Lantern where we find out what's happened to Hal that really throws it for me. Mm -hmm. I love Green Arrow in that film. And like we said, if you watch that movie, but you watch the Green Lantern Beware My Power and think of this as kind of a sequel to that, there's like one thing that is not perfect, but character-wise, it feels better. It works for me. Just so I feel like I actually get to meet Hal and know who that character is before we find out he's lost his jump. So, all right, number three, Solomon Patrick. Number three for Solomon is Green Lantern. Number three for me is, and I say this right now, and I think two and three can kind of shift, it just depends on my mood, but right now it's Long Halloween. And I go with that because I feel like I've only experienced that movie one time watching it as the whole one, as one film. And I really feel like there's things in the second part that I felt they drug out. So yeah. All right. What's your number three, Brian? Uh, JSA. Why do you put it so high? I like the JSA. Okay. I like the flash. I see. I love the flash in it. It's just that third act uh, that throws me. So, all right. Solomon's picks for Solomon. Now his number two. What do you guys think it is? <laughs> Batman or Superman? It's, it's Batman Along Halloween. And my number two is Superman Man of Tomorrow. Brian, your number two? Oh, Superman. James? Well, my number three, since you skipped me, was Legion. Oh, how did I skip you? <laughs> um, my bad, buddy. No, my, my number two would probably be Long Halloween. Okay. All right. Solomon's number one, here we go, is Legion. And my number one is Legion. And here's why. Out of all of the movies... I feel like I had the most fun and enjoyment through all three acts and it was paced better where I feel like Superman, I love Superman Man Tomorrow, but I feel like the third act is a little weaker than it should have been. I feel like Beware My Power is third act loses me. Just Society's third act loses me. This is the only one I feel like actually engaged me more. So Brian, what's your third? Batman. I mean, your 
We're at number one. Jesus, I'm tired. All right, so, and James, your number one? Uh, Superman. Um, you know, Superman, Man of Tomorrow. Like, for uh, you, you know, like, the only thing I didn't really particularly like about that movie was the um, the different the the different take on Parasite, how he like had tiny legs and and grew to like Godzilla proportions. Yeah. Um, other than that, you know, I know you don't like Lobo. I enjoyed him being in it. Um, I even He's enjoyed fine, him man. being like like the cause of of the guy becoming Parasite. Um, but just what happens to him is the only thing that I didn't like about it. Otherwise I really enjoyed the movie and the introduction of Martian Manhunter. Yeah, there's a lot. I'd like to sit down and actually watch the tomorrow verse straight to pick up more threads since the movies aren't really continuing right where the last one left off or like they're not tighter. Um, there's little things that, that get left behind. I think it'd be fun to kind of go back through. You know, and I got thinking, the last thing I'll say, and we'll wrap up here, is I feel like the Tomorrowverse kind of could do a cool movie that's based off Convergence, where we could see, like, other groups of animated films styles return for, like, a Convergence-type um, movie. But that's all we got for today. James, thanks for chatting. Solomon is asleep. He fell asleep here on the couch. Any last thoughts, James? Um, you know, I I haven't done a whole lot. Of, or I don't have a whole lot of. We're we're learning the Legion as we go. You know, I'm learning more about the Legion as we go, and I've only read yeah. a handful of stories with the Legion, so it's been fun learning about them more and more as we go. All right. And remember. We're going to press pause and hear a few words from our other podcasts on Press Play Podcast Network. Hello, Brooks here with the Books with Brooks monthly book club podcast. Here's how Books with Brooks works. We read one book a month and then we talk about it. Classics like Stephen King's The Shining, debut novels like We Are the Brennans by Tracy Lang, and tons of other compelling, life-changing stories, one book and one month at a time. So come read along with us and then listen in. If you are like Tyler and James and can't get enough super talk, check out these other podcasts. Digging for Kryptonite, Supergirl Radio, The Last Sons of Krypton, The Superboy Legacy Podcast, All-Star Superfans, Superman the Animated Podcast, The Aspiring Kryptonians, Always Hold On to Smallville, The Geek of Steel, and Truth, Justice, and Hope. Remember to check out Krypton Report on all social media platforms. Go to linktree.com slash Krypton Report. you find out all of our information. $1 a month, you'll get extra special content that you don't get on the main show, like movie commentaries and whatever else comes out of our mouths. So check it out, patreon.com slash Krypton Report. This is Dan Jurgens, and if you want to have a good time, keep listening to the Krypton Report. Look up in the sky. We just want to say, if you've enjoyed this podcast, please check out other podcasts on the Press Play Podcast Network.